deep practice and techniques that promote it. When you hear the word practice, I wonder what comes to your mind. Sometimes, let's think about it. Is it hours with our instrument? Trying to find that holy grail of perfection? There is not just thing as perfection for an instrument player, a musician, an artist, or anyone on this planet. But there is permanence. When you practice, you do things to make it permanent. So let's talk about what it means when practice makes permanent. Think about the last time you made a mistake with your instrument, or you have a bad habit that you need to break. Or maybe even you have a technique that has improved your playing and you need to correct another technique that is not as good. In other words, you need your brain to remember the good habit. You need your brain to remember the better technique. You need your mind to accept and your body to perform the correct way, the new way. In order to do that, we must practice deeply. Now, when you practice, the first rule is you don't do it to be perfect. We don't practice with our instruments for a perfect practice session. If I sat down and I played all the songs that I know perfectly by memory, by heart, I'm not learning anything. I'm not practicing. I'm just playing. I'm having fun, which is great. But that's not deep practice. Deep practice is about you selecting the passages in music that are difficult and pinpointing exactly what you want to work on. And when you've done that, then you have to give your mind and body time to adjust, correct, make a mistake, recognize the mistake, adjust, correct, and continuously do this until all the adjustments have resulted in a correct technique. The correct technique will be one that you can employ on a repetitive motion, on a repetitive level. So repetition is absolutely essential, but it's the quality, not the quantity as much of your repetition. What you will witness today is deep practice in action. The rules are simple. Rule number one, select the passage in music that you want to work on, usually a short passage. Rule number two, be exact on what you want to work on and limit it down to one thing. Rule number three, try to do that one thing with whatever technique. If it works, stop recognize what you've done well and repeat. Notice that I paused in between stop, recognize and repeat. You have to do that. The brain has to take time to build new connections between those neurons, new connections between the synapses that connect those neurons. You need to develop a new level of myelin. Now I know that sounds quite scientific, but there is science behind this. And if you want to check out the book by Daniel Coyle called The Talent Code, you're going to learn a lot about this myth of genius and what it really is. But to get a little bit deeper into what deep practice is all about, I would like to share with you a TED Talk talking about this rage to master, this dedication to getting the closest we can get to perfection. She calls it grit. In all those very different contexts, one characteristic emerged as a significant predictor of success. And it wasn't social intelligence, it wasn't good looks, physical health, and it wasn't IQ. It was grit. Grit is passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. Grit is having stamina. Grit is sticking with your future, day in, day out, not just for the week, not just for the month, but for years, and working really hard to make that future a reality. Grit is living life like it's a marathon, 
not a sprint. What I do know is that talent doesn't make you gritty. Our data show very clearly that there are many talented individuals who simply do not follow through on their commitments. In fact, in our data, grit is usually unrelated or even inversely related to measures of talent. The ability to learn is not fixed, that it can change with your effort. Dr. Dweck has shown that when kids read and learn about the brain and how it changes and grows in response to challenge, they're much more likely to persevere when they fail because they don't believe that failure is a permanent condition. I hope we learned a little bit from her because in essence, genius is a myth and mastery is only the result of those that have the grit, the rage to master, the ability to implement deep practice into whatever they do. Now, it can be repetitive and long and a little bit frustrating. That's why I want you to make a game of it. And I'm going to introduce you to a game I use with my students and myself today that's going to make deep practice a little bit more fun. So let's go see what the game and deep practice is in real life. I want you to try my smiley game, Mon Jour de Sourire. And what you have, you have two columns in the smiley game. On one column, you have the smile. And if you think it means a good memory, a positive correction, you're absolutely right. And in the sad column, you have the mistake. It's the sad face. Yes, you have the negative memory. You have the bad habit. And for every one mistake you make, you must make in this game five corrections. There we go, five corrections. I'm holding my metronome. I've decided to work on the 16th notes. The articulation will come later. The intonation will come later. Exactly, I want four measures of 16th notes, not to rush, not to slow down, simply be evenly played. I have selected a single speed of 76 beats per minute, and I want to make, again, five corrections for this possible one mistake. Beginning in measure 18. I think that was pretty good. So there goes one. Let's do another one. This game is all about honesty. You have to give yourself credit when you do something good, and you have to be honest with yourself when you do something bad. Third round. Pretty good. I'll accept that. Round number four. Un, deux, And 
there you have the very beginning of deep practice. Now, one thing you need to realize I was doing is I was thinking about what went right every single time I made a good run. I didn't just immediately jump into it again. As I was waiting down, I remembered that worked. And so I repeated it. To review, deep practice is not about perfection. It's about permanence. Deep practice is about making repetitions in order for your brain to remember the improved technique, to remember the good habit, to recall that positive memory over that negative memory in order for you to employ the proper technique that improves your playing and musical ability over the technique that is not as good. Deep practice requires you to pause in between each correction and each error. You must recognize what you do good and you must recognize what you do bad. Allowing the brain to develop new connections between the synapse that connect the neurons. That is the essence of deep practice. And one more time because it's super important for you to remember this. Practice is not ever going to make you perfect, but it will make it permanent. Deep practice requires time, a quality of time, not a quantity. Deep practice requires repetitions and in between each good repetition or bad one, you stop and recognize what you did good or what you did incorrect. You give time for the brain to accept the new improvement, the positive memory, the good habit in order for your brain to remember that over the negative memory, the bad habit, the not as good technique. That is what deep practice is. It requires time. It requires patience and it requires you to be exact and honest with yourself when it comes to your approach to cello and life. I hope you learned something today and share and subscribe if you like. We're going to learn a lot.